Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and this is a continuation of the series where I break down formula solutions to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And like I've said in previous videos, if you're not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should, because it's definitely going to help boost your Excel formula and Power Query game. Right to the question at hand, which is challenge 49. Uh, we have a couple of numbers here and we have the expected result. But how do we get the results? Let's read. It says provide a formula to list those numbers in A2 to A10 where every succeeding digit is greater than or equal to the previous digit. Okay, so it means that the digits essentially have to be in ascending order, right? That's really what it means. It says hence 1336 is valid, yes, because 1336 that's increasing, but 13565 is not. Why? Because you have 6 decreasing to 5. They must either remain the same or you know increase. So that's pretty much what we want to do. So a formula that can give us this results. I'm going to link this challenge in the description as well as the work. So let's get into just the second tab so I can then walk you through my formula solution. So pretty much, we just need to test if the numbers are in ascending order. So we can sort them, first of all, and if the sort is the same as what we have, then we're fine, if that makes sense, right? So if you sort it in ascending order and it's the same thing as what you have, it means that what you have is already sorted. Pretty much, that's your test. Once that can give you a true and a false, you can feed that into a filter function and that tells you, you know, okay, these are the numbers that meet the criteria and the other ones don't even show up. I want my formula to sit in one cell and then spew to as many cells as meet the criteria. Okay, so let's start off with this. I will want to start on a row that I can see doesn't have the numbers in ascending order, just so that we are sure that intermediate parts of our function, you know, is definitely working. For you to have a formula that spews into multiple cells, you need to understand what's happening in one cell first. Once you get what's happening in one cell, it's more like creating a loop and you know you can iterate through you know the entire range and you get what you want. It's very simple. So let's start. So if I want to get it in ascending order, it means I need to pick out individual elements first of all, that's individual numbers, and then sort it. Okay, so how do I pick out individual numbers? I could use the mid function, right? Let me start up and say mid. If I pick this as my text and I start at character one and pick just one character, what do I have? I have one, which is the first number there. If I change this one here to two, I have four. If I change it to three, I will have seven. So essentially, instead of you know changing them one to two to three, I need something that can create for me a sequence of one two three i already said the answer there which is the sequence function right the sequence function can help us generate you know that series that we want one two three four the question is how many numbers should the sequence generate and where should it stop that's dependent on the length of the string or how many digits you have here so what i mean is that if i'm on this cell six eight nine i need three i need sequence to give me three if i'm on this one one four seven seven six i need it to give me five which is essentially the length of the string okay or the number of digits you have in there so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to do comma i'm going to put my sequence function and in the sequence when it asks me how many rows do i want i will say length of you know a3 so whatever the length of a3 is you know that's what i want and i need it to pick one character every time okay so now you can see it spills them out one four seven seven six so now we need to sort this okay so when we sort this we do a sort right and the default is for it to sort ascending so you don't need to um, use any of the other parameters there. so close the bracket let's see okay so you see now that it's sorted to be one four six seven seven not the way it was so after sorting it now i need to bring it all together so that it looks like the number as it was originally here i would easily just use a concat function you could use text join right but why am i not using text join because there isn't a delimiter so it just feels like it's better to use the concat which concat will do so i would put a concat and i'm saying take everything you can see that's just spilled there and concat it you know concatenate it okay so <laughs> all right so now you can see this is one four six seven seven so what we now want to do is we want to test is this equal to the original number okay if they are equal you know then it means that the number was sorted originally and it's fine if they are not equal then it means that oh you know 
it wasn't sorted okay so now let's test we we'll test by just comparing this string to the original string now you will see an answer which seems like it's correct to you but you will then see a problem with this expression when i take it to other cells okay so now it says false which is true because the numbers are not really sorted let's take this down you know okay now we see that we have false everywhere which isn't true really because for 689 689 is already sorted so why is it returning you know um a false instead of a true that's because you are comparing you know two different data types once you use the mid function automatically you have a text of course you've concatenated it it's a text right and the number on this side here the a2 itself is a number so you are comparing number and you know text and that's not going to give you what you want so what you need to do is find a way to convert this text to number which you can do by simply performing a mathematical operation on it so you could use something like zero plus you know something like that okay and now you can see that that's true and you take that down and you can see that you now have the truth so once you have the truth as you can see the truth are in the right places you can put a filter around this and it will return for you the numbers that you want but now the problem i have with this formula as written is the fact that it is sitting in not one cell i have to drag down to get the others so i want a situation where i can have one expression that spills to the others but the building block for that is what i have just done which is this so all i need to do is more or less like you know loop this across all the other cells this is where a function like you know by row or map comes in handy it's just to say that the way map works and this is how i think of it and i probably explained it in some other videos it's more like saying i want to transform what i have to something else or what is the transformation so essentially you are saying pick everything here right and then apply this formula as your transformation meaning that if it is a2 then let a2 become whatever it is you're going to do here and excel will do that for all the cells you have chosen for a3 for a4 so it's more like it's repeating this expression for you know all the cells in whatever range you choose that's really how it works so see what i mean here i'm going to do map sorry about that i'm going to do map okay and then for my array i pick this as my array so okay so that's my array then i pick lambda and now after picking the lambda i need to have a variable that variable is pretty much like an iterator it's that variable that goes through all the elements of this array so it means that variable will start in a2 and then apply this whole calculation on it then it goes to a3 it performs the same calculation a4 and it gets all the results okay so i can call that variable x so what this means is that everywhere i've written in my formula a2 i can just change that to x in such a way that x will start up at a2 it would do this calculation which will return in true or false it will go to a3 it will go to a4 that's really what you are trying to do that's really how the map works very simple really when you think about it so everywhere i have here you know i'm going to change this to x i'm going to change this one here you know to x and here i'm also going to change this to x okay so now i can close bracket that closes the lambda I can close this that closes the map so we should have the same result we had but now sitting in one cell and spinning to the other cells okay right so we pretty much have the same thing but now it's sitting in just one cell and you can see the blue borders around it so once you have this this is the perfect input for the filter function because the filter needs a true or false to then determine which ones are displayed and which are not displayed so we can automatically just put a filter around this and say filter okay and we pick the same array right and that's the map so it means that the include criteria everything here of course will result true or false that will determine whether that particular um a2 to a10 element would show up or not okay so you know and we have you know what it is that we want so if any of these numbers changes to something that is you know already in ascending order it would come out of um out there in the result so let's try one one two two three three okay so you see that it's automatically added that's what you're trying to do and like i say in most of my videos if you make this an excel table then that is even you know much more perfect because as you now add more rows to the table 
this is going to pick it up you're not going to use a range like a to a10 you're going to use structured references where you pick you know the table name and you know the column name so that way as many rows are added you know it picks it up and that is fully dynamic of course you can optimize this a little by including you know the let function if you want to because you can see that you have a2 to a10 appearing maybe two times if you have it appearing you know maybe multiple times rather than having excel you know evaluate it every time you can just create a variable and you know assign it to it that you know can help your formula to be more readable and faster here it's not probably going to change too much but you know maybe just for demonstration purposes let me show you that so i can say let and i create a variable you could call the variable anything you could say range and say let range be a2 to a10 so what this means is that anywhere i see a2 to a10 i can just call it range okay most people won't use a variable like range they use a b or c y because everybody's trying to write the shortest formula ever but it's not the shortest formula challenge <laughs> it's really just well getting an elegant formula that works but most importantly you should work first okay so you can see we have essentially the same thing so the good thing about this is that if the range changes you don't need to start changing you know multiple places a2 to a10 no change it that 10 to 11 or change that 11 to 12 no you just change one which is just this right and once you change this everywhere else in the formula it's going to pick it up so that's the beautiful thing about using the let function not just does it help you, you know, make the formula more readable and make it, um, you know, calculate faster. It also reduces the number of times you need to make changes should you, you know, want to make a change. You just make a change to this input and it automatically works across. So that's, you know, my solution to this problem, which I think is similar to a couple of solutions you would see on the LinkedIn page. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel excel moments definitely will come back with more you know formula breakdowns for you but for now i'm out